Uh, the opposite of a repressor protein or repressible operon is an inducible operon. In this case, the operon is in the off position until the genes are needed. One common example is the LAC operon. This involves E. coli, which lives in our intestines, and E. coli are going to use lactose as a sugar uh, to make their own ATP. So lactose is a disaccharide. It's made of two sugars. And when E. coli have lactose present, let's say I have E. coli living in me, and then I go have some ice cream, all of a sudden that E. coli, we're like, heck yeah, we have lactose. Let's go ahead and make the enzymes so we can digest it. So what happens is um, when the host that the E. coli are living in uh, consumes or eats some lactose, uh, dairy sugar basically, um, the sugar you find in milk, what's going to happen is um, <laughs> what's going to happen is the uh, lactose will um, cause the repressor to to move away, and now the operon is turned on. So basically, it causes the repressor to uh, detach. And so now the operon is turned on. We can make the genes, I'm sorry, we can transcribe the genes that are needed to make the, the enzymes that break down lactose. Um, okay, so for example here, uh, when we have lactose present, it will attach to the repressor and now the repressor cannot bind, and therefore RNA polymerase can transcribe the genes that are needed. However, if there's no lactose, then the, um, the repressor can fit and the gene is turned off.